Hi gang, I'm back again and today I'm actually taking a look at a Kickstarter project that's hitting in late January. It's called Nightmare Forest Dead Run. I've brought Nightmare Forest to the table and keep in mind this is all prototype. None of these are the finished components, although I have to admit the dice and the little wound markers here, I highly doubt we're going to see changes in that. As far as the cards, we might see some change to the card stock as well as possibly some of the artwork and layout of the cards. But all in all, I would say Nightmare Forest is probably about 90% what you would find in the finished product if the game gets its Kickstarter funding. Nightmare Forest is from Solar Flare Games. It's from six players, and it's a light romp through a forest as you're trying to avoid zombie animals. That's right, it's not regular zombies, it's zombie animals. And I say it's kind of lighthearted because you'll see when we take a look at the cards, the cards with the flavor text, kind of funny. Adults are certainly going to get some of the references in the cards and some of the humor. Might be a little bit lost on some of the kids. But it does come with a small rule book, and we'll just take a real quick peek. The rules that I've got right here are not the finalized rules. But as you can see already, plenty of illustrations and examples of play. Only five, six pages of rules, to be very honest with you. That is the little box that it comes in right now. I'm sure the box will be a much nicer quality once we see the Kickstarter arrive. But this is a card game, and you don't have hands of cards. You're actually going to be battling along the table layout where you'll have cards face down, which represent parts of the forest that you're running through. The premise of the game is you're out camping and suddenly a gentle breeze blows up and dead leaves start flying around and guess what? Those leaves aren't the only dead things that are in this forest because you've got the zombie animals. And taking a quick look at the cards here, You'll notice the backs of the cards, many of them have numbers, and this is effectively the rank in the forest. So when you see a number one, that's going to be the first rank. These are going to be weaker creatures that you'll need to battle. So for an example, we have a cat. It says it's a zombie. Well, okay. You need three hits to knock that cat out. That's what this number in the upper corner represents and then you're going to see some flavor text now your kitty's pot pie we've got a chicken chipmunk hey Alvin a ferret gopher groundhog hedgehog so as I mentioned a mouse takes one hit to take the mouse out so these are the first rank zombies. Then we've got the second rank zombies. The armadillo. <laughs> you will be in the armadillo by morning. Huh. Little play on words on the George Strait song. Amarillo by morning. Bobcat. A deer. Dog. And the artwork's pretty nice. Kind of creepy. These animals all have these glowing eyes. But you'll notice there, there aren't really special effects of these animals. It's just flavor text. So with a card you're just looking at, that's how many hits you need to take it out. It's a zombie and a bit of flavor text below. Those are the rank two. Got some rank threes. And I want to leave some surprises in here for you, too. Badger. Is that a honey badger? Coyote. Buck. And you won't encounter every one of these 
zombies as you travel through the forest because you're going to randomly shuffle these cards up and place a few down. Now these are the campers here. Put those off to the side for a second. You'll notice there are some special effect cards. Here's some cheat sheets for you. A couple of those that'll be off to the side. And then these are like the boss monsters. So these are going to be really tough for you to take down. These are the campers. And every camper is the same. You just choose whoever you want to represent you. Marie. Bailey. Alrighty. So those are the campers there. The game also comes with seven dice. These are special dice. I either have blank sides, one hit, or two hits. So we've got the dice there. And then these little crystals represent wound markers. Because each of the campers can only take five wounds before they're out of the game. There is a quick variant to the game as well where uh, you only get three wounds. Although you don't have to go through so many ranks of creatures to make it from the campsite to the road. So the object is to make it to the road, and the first person who makes it to the road is the winner. Everyone else is zombie fodder. So only one winner, only one person can survive. So that's a quick look at some of the contents. These are the little cheat sheets here. So let's take a look to see how do you play Nightmare Forest Dead Run. I've laid out the game as an example for a three-player game of Nightmare Forest Dead Run. And you'll notice that you lay out the zombie creatures in a line. So you begin with, for the three players, you're going to have rows equaling the number of players. So we've got the three down here. So we have Ashley, Adam, and Cody as our campers. Then we have two lines of first rank zombie cards. Although, keep in mind, not every one of these will be a zombie. Sometimes it's actually just forest that you have to hack your way through. Or you could even run across uh, someone who's going to help you or something that will help you as well. But we've also got Two rows of rank two, two rows of rank three, and then finally up top, a row of the boss zombies. And then beyond the fourth rank would be the road. So that's where you're trying to get to, is to the road and safety. And get out of this nightmare forest! I've zoomed in a little just to give you a closer look at the goings on in a turn in Nightmare Forest Dead Run. Each of the players does begin with a piece of gear. And normally you would just have this in front of you, face down, until you've used it. Then it's going to stay face up. Simply because of space restrictions, I put pieces of gear underneath the player cards just to start off. So we've got Ashley. Ashley's gear is a lantern to begin with. It's going to automatically provide her with a hit. This shows how much noise it makes. It doesn't make any noise, so using it, there's no risk of drawing additional zombies to the player. It shows that it's a one-handed item, and it shows how many uses it has. Well, this has infinite uses, so it can be continuously used. Keep in mind, each of the players can only finish their turn with three gear cards. Each turn, they can choose to search for gear, fight zombie animals, or throw gear at people who are ahead of them in the forest in the hopes of making noise that will draw more zombies to their opponent. In each of the zones, you'll have so many dice you're able to roll. So in the first zone, or first rank, as I've been saying, you get four dice. 
There's also a little handy dandy card that you're going to place along the trail to show what happens when you move from one zone to the next. Also giving you an idea what you're going to face in that zone. So in the first zone we see the zombies all have a health of one to three and the second they get tougher three to five and they will get progressively more difficult to defeat as you go along. It's also showing that you get to draw a free gear card when you move from one to two and you're going to add an additional die to your pool. So when you go into zone two you'll have five dice. Zone three six dice and in the boss zone, zone four, you'll have all seven dice at your disposal. So let's say Ashley decides with her four dice first she's going to search for gear. You can roll as many dice as you want. With one hit you get to draw one gear card. With two hits you're able to draw two gear cards, keep one, and discard the other. You don't put the other one that you're not keeping back into the deck, it gets discarded. Of course, if you run out of gear cards, you're just simply going to take your discards, shuffle them up, and create a new gear deck. So Ashley's going to search with one die. And unfortunately, it's a blank, so that means she got nothing. That leaves her with three dice. Ashley doesn't want to sit around searching forever, so she decides she wants to advance into the first area and take on whatever's there. And it turns out it is the cat. The cat has a health of three. Once again, as I mentioned, there's no special abilities with the zombies. It's just showing that that's the health that you have to defeat. So we've got Ashley there taking on the cat. We know she's got the lantern, which provides her with the one hit right off the bat. So that means she only needs to get two hits to dispose of the cat. She's got the three dice. Ashley's going to push her luck and only roll two. And unfortunately, she only gets one hit plus the one from the piece of gear. That's two. It doesn't equal three. So she has not killed the zombie cat. Instead, she's going to take a wound. As I mentioned before, each of the players has five wounds before they're out of the game, unless you're playing the quick variant where you only have three wounds. It's important also to keep in mind that once you get into the boss monsters, if you don't kill them, they hit you with two wounds. So they are much tougher and much more deadly than the other zombie animals you've run across until that point. Well, Ashley has used her piece of gear, so it would be turned sideways to show that she can't use it again, but she still has one die. She can't get three hits, so she'll use that die to get another piece of gear, or hopefully get some more gear. And she does. She rolls the hit, draws the card, and gets a 9mm pistol. Shows it automatically provides two hits, but it does create noise. So depending on the noise level, you'll roll dice to see if when you use the pistol, if it draws a level one zombie to your location. Some of the more powerful weapons automatically draw zombies. Of course, this would be face down, so the pl other players don't get to see it. And because Ashley's used all of her dice, her turn would end, and she still needs to get rid of that cat in her next turn. As an example, then, we've got Adam. Adam's piece of gear is a katana, which automatically provides three hits. Doesn't have any noise. It's a two-handed weapon. Now, it's important to keep in mind as far as the handedness of the weapons, or how many hands you need to use. A player can take two one-handed weapons, use them at the same time, and combine the hits. If they do that, they can't use any other gear that turn, either beforehand or after. The katana's along those lines too. It says you can't use any gear before using it, and you can't use any gear after using it. 
So Adam's got the katana. He's got four dice. And let's say Adam decides he wants to search for gear too. So he'll take one die and didn't find anything. Still has the three dice. He's going to advance into the next area of the forest. When you flip a card and it's a zombie, you have to attempt to fight that zombie animal. You can't just sit there and look at it. This is another cat, so it takes three hits. Well, Adam's got the katana. He could use that piece of gear to automatically kill the cat. So let's say he does that. And there are no victory points or anything like that in Nightmare Forest Dead Run. It's simply whoever gets to the road first wins. So the cat's been disposed of, gets discarded, and Adam is now in this location here, and he still has three dice. So Adam's going to push his luck and go for the next zone and runs across a chipmunk, which needs two hits to dispose of the zombie Alvin. He's got the three dice. He's going to push his luck with only two. And luckily enough, he gets two hits. So he's disposed of the chipmunk. Now, he gets to move further up. He only has one die, and he knows that he's going to be moving into that second rank, where now the zombies take three to five hits to kill. So he knows he doesn't have any gear left he could use. Moving to Cody, let's just say Cody decides, well, all right, what piece of gear do I have? And it is a hot dog skewer. Nothing too thrilling here. So Adam's already gotten way ahead of Cody. Cody decides, I'm going to throw this piece of gear at Adam. So he's going to discard this piece of gear, roll one die, and if he gets a hit, that would bring a level one zombie to Adam's location. And he does! So a new zombie card would come out and be placed underneath Adam. So when Adam's turn comes up, Adam's going to have to fight that zombie. Cody could have thrown a piece of gear at Ashley as well and had two zombies here that Ashley would need to battle that turn. So there's a bit of take that involved in Nightmare Forest Dead Run. I want to point out though that you can only have two zombies in one space. You can never have more than that. So Cody would go about taking his turn. He could search, he could move on, try to fight more zombies, and effectively you're going to rinse and repeat as you go along, adding more dice to your pool as you move further and further through the Nightmare Forest. Easy peasy, takes 5-10 minutes to explain the rules of the game. And then you can get moving on to pushing your luck to try to get to the road. So that is what you'll find with Nightmare Forest Dead Run. This is coming to Kickstarter at the end of January, and you might be wondering, what do I think of the game overall? We've taken a look at what you'll find inside Nightmare Forest Dead Run, as well as talked about how to play the game. Now I have to point out that this is a Kickstarter project, so this isn't the final product yet. But, as I mentioned before, about 90% of it is complete, in my opinion. So, who's the game going to appeal to, and should you back this Kickstarter? Well, I have to point out that this isn't a heavy strategy game or anything of the like. It's a, a light, push-your-luck kind of game that's really focused towards casual gamers and family gamers. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second, Jeff, this is a zombie game. How are my kids going to play it? 
Well, you have a better understanding of what's appropriate for your children than I do. But I have to point out that there's no gruesome artwork. It's creepy. The animals are kind of creepy with glowing zombie eyes. But there's no blood and guts or anything like that involved. So keep that in mind. Plus, you don't necessarily have to make it where the animals kill anybody who doesn't make it to the road. Maybe they're just stuck in the forest. Those poor campers just can't get out. You can kind of play around with it as well. Plus, even though it's got a little bit of a take that factor to the game with throwing the gear to make your opponents who are ahead of you have to fight off extra zombie animals and such, but in a family environment, you might not want to use that mechanic and just make it a race against time. I found the game to be a lot of fun. It's chucking dice, it's pushing your luck. And I played it with my nephew, who's 14, and my niece, who's 9. And she liked it, well, they both liked it, but my 9-year-old niece actually got a really big kick out of it, too. And she wasn't scared by the concept of zombies or anything like that, zombie animals. It's important to keep in mind who this game is going to be marketed to, who it's going to appeal to. And as I mentioned before, it's casual gamers. This is one of those wind up, wind down kind of games. I hate to use the term filler game because in my opinion, filler is what fast food places put in their ground beef <laughs> to stretch it out. Filler is not a positive term by any stretch of the imagination. So I like to call certain games wind up or wind down games, meaning that you wind up your night of gaming. It only takes about a half hour or so to play Nightmare Forest Dead Run. And you can also use it to kind of wind down an evening of gaming after you finished up with some of the heavier strategy games or Euro games that you might have in your collection. By all means, if Nightmare Forest Dead Run is appealing to you and you like the components, then by all means, I would say definitely give this a shot on Kickstarter simply because it's a bit different. It's not your typical zombie game, and it really is aimed at a pretty wide audience. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks so much for watching. If you like our videos, be sure to become a patron of the gaming gang through our Patreon page, and also swing by thegaminggang.com for all the latest in news and reviews and comics and gaming and movies and everything under the sun as far as geek culture. And until next time, all the best.